This is KD Plasma 6 and there are some major changes and some hints where Plasma might be in the near future. Starting with some core level changes, we have Qt 6. This is the first version of KD with the Qt 6 framework uh, used by KD. And while on the surface you might not notice much of a difference, having a more modern version is always better in the case of uh, features and improvements. This version comes with a Wayland set as default. It takes the problems and bugs we had in the previous Plasma 5 release and fixes them to make Wayland solid and stable. Smooth animations, no screen tearing and all the features work as you would expect inside Wayland. It is now extremely reliable on Plasma and it also adds the new Wayland specific features too like watching supported uh, HDR content on your system. You do get a Wayland to X11 bridge which works in making X11 apps recordable inside Wayland session. I guess uh, soon we will see the last days of X11 on all major distributions or rather major desktop environments. Visual changes on the desktop are subtle but plenty. The floating panel seems like a neat little addition on the desktop and it looks nice with the slightly rounded corners. Windows reaching the panel on maximized turns off the floating mode with a smooth animation and a nice little ease out effect making it feel more natural. On the right side you get all the important quick settings and something that I noticed is that the monitor brightness slider by default uh, is available inside Kiri. I don't get this on GNOME uh, or Mac or even on Windows when I connect my external monitor and the settings slider inside the user interface is such a better option than to try and fiddle finding the right button to change stuff inside the monitor. Panel settings page is updated, now you also get this interface which looks a bit more modern and better since it shows you the previews in terms of thumbnails. You can change most of the panel settings from here. All tab interface received an update and now it looks more like what other operating systems offer and it is more convenient to use. But the breeze theme remains mostly same as of now. Most of the user interfaces have already adopted uh, rounded corners, glass morphism, borderless design and more but KD stayed uh, kind of unique in this race and continued with the very visible bordered interface and sharp corners at least till the release of Plasma 6 but now you get very visible mixture of both that is rounded corners and sharp corners throughout the system which I don't really appreciate or uh, rather I, I personally don't appreciate this kind of design. You get this gnome styled activities page with the visible rounded corners but the search bar is almost sharp. Only a few pixels of border radius is probably there. The same goes for the plus button to add new desktop, almost sharp corners. There are plenty of these design inconsistencies in their uh, user interface which I will be talking about in the issues uh, section and I'm going to include this section in all of my next videos uh, after my not so good experience with vanilla OS so that you can have an idea of what to expect when you're trying out a beta level software. Okay back to Breeze. It did not go full borderless with Plasma 6 but now it looks cleaner with less borders separating the user interface elements. They made a single pixel wide border and assigned a not so vibrant color. All of the apps which are shipped look less busy and more clean. I think it was a necessary change making the KDE interface look more modern and better. A small design change in the list view makes it look more modern. Nice little margins in the hover uh, decoration or even in the selected sidebar element. The slightly rounded corners all add a very modern touch. The elements are more spaced out now and they look a lot cleaner. And I notice now some of these layouts in the main view now look straight out of GNOME like the on-screen keyboard, Wi-Fi or even the hotspot inside the Plasma settings window. The Plasma overview is probably one of the best editions of Plasma 6, although it looks and works almost like the GNOME minus the dash and the all applications part. It is incredibly useful, especially when having a ton of windows open. Makes the work of managing windows by the user much faster and more efficient. I know I mentioned about this previously, but there I talked mostly about the design perspective of uh, the overview or the Plasma activities whatever you would call it. Unlike on GNOME you can have multiple desktops open even when you don't have any apps running and those are remembered by KDE when you again reboot or log out and go log back in. You also get this cool desktop cube animation. It isn't very useful or better than the original uh, animation that you have or the interaction but some of the weirdest features in Linux attracted me almost four years back although I was just 16 at that time and by the time I post this video I guess I will be 20. Okay when you type something in the search it shows results like you would find in GNOME and if it matches an open window then it shows the window instead of the results. 
KRunner on desktop has also become very fast and it's even editable right now. You can just access settings to change the way your search results are placed when you try to search for something in KRunner. Okay, now let's talk about the system app changes or about the changes in the KDE apps. KDE system settings has now reorganized the list view into different categories. Inside appearance and style, you now get all the theme related stuff. System sounds now have a new tab which includes the ocean theme as the default and the fallback theme from free desktop. The default apps page has got some updates. I feel like it is better presented now grouped into types rather than focusing on the vast number of extensions we have for each type. And KD Connect settings are also now available inside the settings app itself. You can also get options to change and assign color profiles to external monitors and some additional accessibility settings for color blindness. Dolphin now has a keyboard shortcut to access toolbars. You can right click on a folder to open it in split view and transfer files between them. I also really like this feature where you can just right click on a folder and try and open it using other apps. We also get this Nautilus option here. So I can just open this inside Nautilus, open this inside Kate and do all the edits accordingly. Spectacle, the screenshot utility was also updated for KDE. You can now start recording with hotkeys like Super Plus R and a nice icon pops up in the panel to inform you that your screen is getting recorded. Clicking that stops the recording. The screenshots are now saved by default in pictures slash screenshots and the recordings in videos slash screencast directory which is a bit annoying for me since they mix up with the GNOME screen recordings but you can always change it from settings again. It also has added VP9 support. Kate has a new text-to-speech feature and the voice is pretty uncanny. Sounds like a dystopian sci-fi movie villain. Jason Parser is here which is apparently much faster and there are some changes in the language section. In console, there is a new memory monitoring feature which lets the system close tabs which exceed the set memory limit instead of closing the entire console window. Plasma Mobile has got some changes under Plasma 6. I've always wanted to try Linux on mobile devices and this was my chance to take a look into Plasma Mobile. Since it is surprisingly available in the desktop version of Fedora, it was only 9 MBs extra to download and install so why not go for it. It is pretty neat and pretty fluid. There is this new first time setup that guides user to configure some basic aspects of the system such as the Wi-Fi, cellular settings and more. The authentication dialog has been ported to a more mobile look but sometimes the button would be completely invisible. There is a new docked mode which enables multitasking with floating windows like you get in the desktop version. There is an always show keyboard toggle option that enables the setting to be accessible from the navigation bar and some more changes which you can check by visiting their website from the description below. Okay, now let's talk about the issues I have faced and I will also give you some personal opinions. I find a huge, huge lack of consistency in the entire user interface and the user experience. Some places have very well noticeable and visible rounded corners while some elements are super sharp like the list view of the settings page which has this added margins and spacings while the list view in Dolphin has a different look. It would have been understandable if the interface had been compacted for small icons but even in larger sizes it all looks the same. And it is not just in Dolphin, half of the settings app looks different than the other half. Even the icons inside the settings app are inconsistent. We have colored icons here and there's a white solid icon and then there we get an outlined icon. Similarly, this icon is rounded while the other icons are sharp. And this extends throughout the desktop experience. Um, you might not just care about it but I am a multimedia student and I'm much of a designer myself so I thought of pointing them out. And I think that is pretty much what you need to think before you try KDE. It isn't a big issue here but yeah some user interface changes need to be done in KDE. Gurum has been doing the same thing with GDK3 and 4 apps and after so many releases we are finally getting to see GDK4 alternatives so yeah it would be wrong to just point out KDE Plasma. If you want to try out, you can get Fedora 40. I have it installed for a couple of days. Works pretty well and you also get access to uh, GNOME 46 in this way. Check the links provided in the description if you want to install it for other distros. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.